lectures. I decided to break the lectures because uh, the new way of having the lectures online, like I said, I want us to access and try this one. If all of you can access this one and you find this type of lectures being useful and good, then we maintain. Otherwise, I'll give you the handouts, then I'll do the voiceover for you like we've been doing it. Even though with this, when I finish, I have to go through a lot of process to compress to make sure that WhatsApp can take it. Normally, once we do this type of lectures, we normally put it on uh, YouTube. Then you have to, I will give you the link, you have to go and do download it and work with it. But I want to make things much more simpler and easier than it used to be for everybody. As you can see... Uh, what we have here, we are the next topic is heavy lifts. Heavy lifts and deck cargo are slightly different. There is a slight difference on the heavy lifts and uh, deck cargo. The precautions are almost the same. But the concept is that for deck cargo, the things that we load on deck are meant for deck. And the ones that is going to uh, the down part of the ship is called under deck. But for the heavy lifts, you can load a heavy lift on deck and under deck. I repeat, you can load a heavy lift on deck and under deck. Basically, in cargo operation, that's for the, most of the mariners and most of the companies, anything more than 40 ton is considered to be a heavy lift. Anything which is more than 40 tons is considered to be a heavy lift. And I will later give you the precautions that we normally uh, take that is required by you to know and be producing anywhere during your interview, examination, and everywhere uh, when you are being asked to. But let's look at the picture that we see over here. Follow the Kesa, please. The, as you can see, somebody is standing here holding a line. The line he is holding is called a steady line. Before you lift a heavy lift, or that before you load or discharge a heavy lift, we normally attach a steady line to the cargo so that once you raise the cargo in air, the cargo has the ability to turn around itself. It, it will be turning around itself. But with this very uh, steady line, the line here, we call it steady line. Any rope at all can be used as a steady line. With this very steady line, the main function is that you can use it to direct the cargo to how you want the cargo to be positioned. Maybe you don't want this side to face you. You want, look at the Kesa, you want this side to face the man. Maybe when they want to bring it on a jetty or load it on a ship, they want this section where the Kesa is to face the man. Then he will just pull a little bit of the steady line, then it will turn towards him. And how he wanted to be. So what you see over here on top here, look at the Kesa. On top here, that is attached to the crane. It is called a spreader. A spreader. It is meant to spread the weight to give it an even distribution of weight. And that is the crane jib that you can see here. The crane jib, and then the crane hook is here. The one that looks like an anchor is the hook. And then this is the crane jib. So that is the uh, another type part of the spreader, and you can see another part of the spreader is also here. This line, look at the Kesa. This side is also another part of the spreader. It is just to spread the weight to give the weight an even weight. The moment the line that is this line, look at the Kesa. This lines, the moment these lines are very 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 close and narrow they are likely to break or cut each other and break. And once this whole thing breaks, it means the whole cargo is going to get damaged and destroyed. And sometimes when we are loading, as per the precautions, when you think it is too heavy, you shore up the cranes. When you say shore up the cranes, it means use two or more cranes to hold it and load or discharge the cargo. That is the main reason for shoring up. And when you are doing the shoring up, that's when two cranes are being used or three cranes are being used, like the two that we see over here. You need to get a supervisor to direct the crane driver who is just hiding here. The other one is also hiding behind. So you need an operator, um, a supervisor to signal to the two of them so that the two of them will lower the cargo at the same time, will lift the cargo at the same time 
one will not lift and leave the other so that the cargo will tilt in a different way and that is exactly what the precaution is trying to tell us when we go into details you tend to know and under no circumstance should a lifted cargo you should pass under a lifted cargo the cargo can drop at any time and kill you and what you see down here you can see something brown down here that is a damage for this cargo a typical damage for this cargo so basically with this very concept like i said mostly most of the heavy lift cargo are loaded on deck but like i said a heavy lift cargo can be loaded under deck and on deck and there is a difference in precaution when you are being asked to produce a deck cargo precaution and when you are being asked to produce a heavy lift precaution though they are similar but they are not the same okay so let's get to the next one Yes, if you look at this very picture also, you can see the same lines here and they have used a spreader to make sure these two lines, the line here and the line here, do not come close. Like I said, once they come close, they are likely to cut each other and they will part and they will fail in action. So as they are loading, you can see one rope is holding here. It goes to the other side. Another one is also passing here, goes to the other side. And this is the crane hook. You see how they have held it. This, if you come to this very section, the one on your right also, when you come there, you can see the same similar situation here. So they have shore up the cranes. Normally for heavy lifts, we shore up the cranes so that we will be able to lift the weight because normally it is heavy. If this cargo is, for instance, almost about 70 ton and the crane capacity is about 45 ton, it means there is no way this crane, one single crane, can lift the cargo. So when we double them, it is 45 plus 45, giving us 90. But the cargo in uh, at stake is 70. So it means it will be the two of them will be able to what lift the cargo smoothly. And that is the main reason why sometimes we do that. And that is also another example of a heavy lift cargo being loaded on deck. So they have to apply. The precaution when they are loading heavy lifts and again they have to apply the precaution when they are loading on deck so they have to apply two precautions here now let's go into details so if necessary rig derrick as per rigging plan if you are using derrick you rig it if you are using cranes then you have to prepare the crane and make sure that whether you are going to use one crane or two cranes check the operation of the winch the crane you are going to use, the mooring winches that is on a ship, you need to check them to make sure all of them are running. Because when you lift the cargo from the ground or when you lift the cargo from the ship, the possibility of the ship tilting to one end or the other due to the weight is very high. And once it does that, you have, if your winches are not working to adjust the mooring ropes, then you are going to have an accident i will give you few accidents that has happened in ports due to poor loading or discharging of the heavy lifts ensure there will be adequate stability stability is a key thing always remember in all conditions your ship is at a good stability condition ensure the deck can support the weight i have told you already the deck is having its own weight so consult capacity plan to make sure the deck can easily support the weight on it plan a lashing arrangement you must always make sure before even they bring the cargo you must always make sure you plan a lashing arrangement how are you going to lash the, the cargo to the ship how are you going to secure it how are you going to are you going to use only one rope are you going to use four ropes are you going to use five ropes so you think about all this before even you commence the loading on the ship and when you get to the other port are there equipment or gun cranes that can remove the cargo from the ship? There has been cases whereby they load the cargo from Europe or maybe Asia. Once they get to Africa, the African ports do not have the required cranes to lift the cargo from the ship. Then they have to return the cargo back to where they pick the cargo, which is a huge cost to the ship owner. So you check all this. Check that the associated gears is available as ships. Straps, 
shackle and acetate where and what are the lifting points so you make sure that all the gears like i told you all the loading and discharging gears the equipment you are going to use to load and discharge they are on the ship they are available at the next port make sure you inform everyone on board why do you need to inform everybody on board that you are going to load a heavy lift because the chief cook might be cooking some people might be sleeping if you don't inform them and the ship tilts a little bit those who are cooking are going to lose the food and they are going to even get injured and those who are sleeping also are going to move from one uh, from their bed and hit on the ground which is also going to cause an accident so we make sure we do all this or we carry all these precautions to ensure that no accident occurs during the loading ascertain what lifting gears and facilities are available at the port of discharge i've said that inform everybody that's immediately before you load you have to inform everybody on board the operation is supposed to be supervised by an experienced person i just explained that in a picture to you hands to turn mooring and gangway make sure your gangway and your mooring which is on the jetty you are always checking them anytime you are loading heavily because like i said the moment you leave the cargo the ship is supposed to tilt one end or the other and you need to be very careful and particular about it so that you do not cause any accidents have control line ready to steer the lift and if necessary i showed you the steady line if you remember the line the steady line i showed you have is some people also call it control line let's go back and check what i showed you this line is the control line or the steady line this one okay and that is what we are trying to uh, get over here so let's go back to where we ended yes that's here second gate attended uh that's second gate attended this is we are not talking about the gay and the lesbians no all that we are trying to say is second gang okay attend uh, in board in board to give better control of the derrick what we are trying to do, say is that if you are using two gun uh, two cranes make sure you have experienced person to supervise it that is point number two and point number four they are trying to tell you if you are using two make if you don't have experienced people on your ship to drive the cranes for you get assistance from the shore to do that for you if heavy lift are to be shipped load or store aboard, aboard first the resultant what they are trying to tell you over in point five is that if you are loading two or more heavy lifts try your best to make sure that the first one that come will go to the extreme end followed by the next one but you don't have to load it in such a way that the other one will have to be lifted above it to the other side so let me use the picture to illustrate to you if for instance you are loading this one this one at the corner here at the back here you don't have to put this one down just close here so that when you leave the next one you move it all over look at the kids you move it all over this and come and dump it here that is something they are trying to say here so like this very one for instance if you are going to load two of this you have to make sure the first one that you are loading goes to the corner side that's the c side the last end then the next one you load will just come close here but you don't have to put the first one down here then the next one you raise it way above this one and go and put it there it does not make any sense and that is what they are trying to tell you over here if discharging was ship gear as the lift is that point says if discharging was ship gear as the lift is landed and the weight is the ship will come upright this may cause the lift to drag okay in an anomaly second if you are discharging this kind of cargo once you put them on the ground the possibility of the weight dragging the ship because it is hooked to it is very high so the moment it touches the ground then you disen you disengage the uh, the crane if you don't disengage the, the crane either the cargo will be pulled or the ship will be pulled and that is so, uh, normally that some of the things that happen so let's get to another precaution that's um, how it is being hooked this is just a typical 
you don't need this diagram anymore because I showed you a, a real picture of how the heavy lift need to be looked at. And this was the spreader I show you. That's the lifting beam, the spreader. And this is indicating the rope, the rope I showed you. And this is the heavy lift. This is how it's supposed to be lifted. And that is basically how it goes. So I'll turn about and try to see if I can just get you something small for you to see. Um, let me see. I'll go back to slide. Okay. Yeah, so I'll say for now, this is what I'll try my best to see if I can really get you something okay now let's see this one some of the accidents that has happened as you can see some of the accident that has really happened it was they were loading in ports so don't think during port loading there would there can be any accident look at it this happened right in ports and just look at this one also at sea the ship broke into two due to poor loading on deck and under deck and look at this one all the cargo all the timber they have loaded on deck are just spilling over and is going straight inside the water and these are the reasons why we don't want you to experience such a thing so if I go back even online a little bit for you and for you to see something I want you to just get some few accidents that we have here uh, let's wait a little bit and see I want to show you practical examples so that when you get a chance to load you see how the poor loading on deck has caused this and it is something sometimes you cannot do anything about it and when your ship behaves this way the possibility of you capsizing is very high very 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 high look at this so let's go back to our slide there is something we call army tank. Army tank. I know when we say army tank, uh, most of you, your mind will be going somewhere. What is army tank, by the way? Yes, I'm giving you some few moments to think about when we say army tank. Army tank. It's also part of a heavy lift. Army tank loading is also part of a heavy lift. When we say army tank, I want you to consider what it is. The most important thing is, I'll tell you later on, the most important thing is you need to put a cradle here, a wooden block, to support the weight here. This is a tie. This is where the ties are. And this one is something like a metal lashing that you weld it to the body of the uh, army tank and onto the ship so that you'll be able to just load it. And if I want to show you a typical army tank, then you'll be able to see how an army tank looks like yes um, I will just go straight online oh sorry okay don't worry when you finish you can also do that okay Now you know what an army tank is. Now I hope you know what an army tank is. This is a typical army tank. Uh oh, just let's wait a little. This other part sometimes not too good. I want to see if I can, yes, yes, this is it. I want something like this. Just look at this section, this section on your screen. Just look at this section on your screen here. This is a typical, um, what we call army tank. Ammo cars are what we call army tank. In the olden days, during uh, the World War II and even most of the Vietnam War and the China War and the rest, the merchant ships were being contracted to move this kind of cars 
from one place, from one country to another country. And when you are loading them, you need great precautions because the bottom here, if you load them on your deck and you don't support them down here with cradle, that is a, a timber wood or a block so that it sits on it. Because sometimes this whole thing here, look at the Keza, this box here is a, a space that they will load rice, they will load food items in here to go and feed refugees. So once they load the food items here, it becomes very heavy. And the ties over here will be bearing the entire weight of this thing. So if you want to spread the weight, you put something like a wooden block at the bottom here. Then this whole tank sit on it so that the weight will be spread throughout. And this whole gun end over here is also a very heavy thing. So sometimes when you load them, you put something like a block there for this thing to rest on it because if you don't do that and the ship roll the ship go down and up the possibility of this whole thing tilting or rolling on the on on deck to fall inside the water is very high so whenever we are loading army tank these are some of the things that we normally consider to make sure that it is well secured if we come back to i want to show you some of the few ones that we normally have uh, let me see i learned in ghana here somebody says he's just making one i wonder if you'll be able to make it i will send you some few videos about how they load it so you can see so the bottom here a cradle need to be uh, kept in there and sometimes they remove this gun look at the keza here they remove the gun and once they remove the gun then they will be able to make sure they are able to load it and load it well. They are, by the way, they are different, different types. We have the German made, we have the American, we have the Korean, we have the China. So all of them are different, different, but they work in a similar condition. So if you are a merchant ship and you, they, they give you this to load from one end to the other, you should be able to make sure that these things are well lashed to the point that you can be able to transport them from one point to the other. And this is a schematic diagram that they have put over here. So this is considered to be the gun. This is considered to be the body, the cradle that I said we put here. These are the ties, the metal ties that you see. So if you look at it carefully, a 60 ton army tank, this will have lifting points. Ensure proper weight distribution. Like I said, the cradle is there to ensure proper weight distribution. The load is to is concentrated on relatively narrow tracks. Then all the load, like I was telling you, are concentrated on those ties, those chain ties. So if you put a cradle down, the whole weight of the thing will be spread out. And that is basically what they are trying to tell you over here. So this is the process of securing it. And you follow this process and you make sure you secure it well. Chalks or bed on which packages are to rest should be positioned over beams. Heavy parts of items should, where possible, be placed over the bulkhead below with deck giving additional shore place. So you do all this to make sure that the side inside the cargo hold on deck that is going to be you, if it is going to be inside the cargo hold, the side that is going to touch the bulkhead, that's the walls of the ship. You put something there like a danny so that when it shifts, it does not damage the, because it is pure metal, it does not damage the walls of the ship. And these are some of the reasons why we need to just make sure we understand the heavy lift principle. And like I said, you do not confuse the heavy lift with the deck cargo. And if you have any question, you just have to let me know and I'll answer you. So with this, do not make, make sure under your watch, whilst you are working at the port, nothing of this sort happens. And it's very crucial to me. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.